Hello, guys. Good morning. At least it's morning here. I don't know what time it is. What time did you guys wake up today? Two. Tune in on here. Let's see. We have four people attending. We have 12 registered. So we wait a couple of seconds until everybody else sh shows up. What time did you wake up today, guys? Oh, let me post a poll about the review. Okay. A I woke up at A2. I woke up at A2. It's pretty early. Pretty early. You guys are pretty determined. You guys, I'm pretty sure you guys will do pretty good on the test. Because if you're you you woke up at eight o'clock in the morning to review, you're nailing it. I'm pretty sure. So I'm gonna post a poll about the units because we we don't have a really focus. We don't really have a like a main focus. A unit a unit focus on this on this um stream. We're gonna I'm gonna take a Q and A's in the beginning, and then we'll do. I have a lot of FRQ practices that will be helpful. And then I'll post a poll about the reviews, the unit reviews that you guys might like think you need more practice in. If you guys, you can, you can put, you can start putting your questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In the question, in the question box. I hope all of you guys are doing well. They are, how many days left for the test? What, 10 days? 10 days left for the test, I believe. Your test. So we have, let's see, just gonna take a little bit of time, sorry. We have. Perfectly in it. Okay. 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 So take a couple of seconds to answer the poll I posted. Okay, so uh, Abigail, Abigail, this is a great question. We're going to be covering, I'm going to be talking about the resources that College Board ha has provided for us, for AP students and teachers. Um, so the College Board has like, a, if you, okay, so if you go, to, um, let me bring up the the thing, the, the steps kind of where to get, where to go to access it on my AP, AP, if you guys are using it, my AP is like a cla AP classroom full of like, full of, uh, full of like resources and questions and multiple cho choice questions and FRQs for specific tests. During the year for me, for me, uh, my teachers would use it to actually use it as a, as like a unit test or as a unit test. Yeah. As like, an alternative to the test you actually take in class, which I think is pretty helpful because that's a great way to prepare for the test. Honestly, guys, you guys, if you want to prepare for the test, obviously knowing your content is very important, but practice. Practice makes, honestly, if you practice, like if you do at least, like you guys have enough time. I'm pretty sure you guys have enough time. You have more than 10 days. So I would, like your FRQs should not take that long. Well, no, no, no. Okay, no, no, no. Take that. I'm going to take that away because they're actually timing you so i would say for me i'm doing like two frqs every day for my for my ap classes for my other ap classes so i think you should be able to get to get in at least maybe half of the half of the half of the frqs they they have on the college board they have i think 25 and i would say start with the ones that you are weak on like the 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 units you're weak on so let me see you guys answered you guys said agriculture and political unit okay so 
start with those maybe because they they also have the they have them by unit which is very helpful I really like what the college board is doing and the resources they're providing. Okay, so that's a lot of talking. So you you can go to the college board and then go to my AP or and then go to, I don't have a visual, but you can go to the I don't know if I can can I you guys you guys are familiar with my AP, I'm assuming, right? Okay, so if you're not, we can maybe try to go there. Okay. Okay, okay. So you guys are familiar. Okay. So go to my AP and then go to AP Hug Classroom. If you're taking more than more than one AP class, you might have more than one classroom. And then you go to optional practice and then start practicing. You have and the good thing, the good thing is about about this is that they actually give you the the answer key, which is great. You're literally like you actually can grade yourself. And that's how you learn. If you don't grade yourself, you're not like you're actually doing the work okay but you're not you know you're not like you're not learning from your mistakes the mistakes you're, the, that you're making so that's 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 very important please guys do it you have enough time don't complain we got what week week and a half work it hard and then you're done no more ap no AP, no more ap tests anymore so yeah okay so we have more people showing up so we're just for the people that are just showing up we're just answering some uh, answer answering some questions right now so if you have any questions drop them down in the ask question section and then we will do some FRQ practice after so okay so we have here population unit. Okay, we can. The thing is that we have, because I'm not, I don't have slides, but I can, I can, I don't have specific slides, but I can pull up stuff from the five of all, like from our database. So. I'm not sure. Okay, I, I. Because usually we don't share slides for Q and A's because they're supposed to be like general, like answers and questions. So I'm not sure, but I, are you able? To, you should actually, if you you should be able to access the older, older replays. Okay, I'll see. I I might be able to do that. I'm not sure because it's they're not I've, they're not created by me, but we're able to reuse them. Okay, so we'll answer some questions. Start putting some questions in the ask question Okay, so we'll start answering some questions. Okay, so we have first question. Okay, can you explain stimulus diffusion and give examples? Okay, so stimulus diffusion is the diffusion of an, an idea or a phenomenon where the idea itself is diffused, but as it's diffused, there's some changes that occur to the idea. So, I mean, a great example we see in most textbooks are like fast food restaurants, like McDonald's. For example, like McDonald's serves a lot of like beef, right? Like not 
<laughs> so, so there's a lot of burgers, right? That have beef in them, right? And they also have chicken, right? They also have chicken burgers. But if you like, if we see like McDonald's in other parts of the world, like India, where they're Hindus, right? So culturally, it's not acceptable to eat beef because cows are sacred, right? So you're not gonna see you are not gonna see beef on in beef on the menu of McDonald's in that part of the part of the world, right? So I think that would be a great example, and I think it's pretty easy to explain. I think another example I would say, I would say like a more like fun stuff to talk about is the print, um, the the fingerprints, the what is it called? The lock screen, like to open your lock screen, right? You have to use your fingerprint. So I was talking about it last time. I don't remember what phone it was, but I know that uh, the iPhone started with that, right? In the beginning, iPhone started with that, but Samsung kind of like, in the very recent years with their last phones that they um that they released the finger like an iphone you have to use the button right the home button to o unlock it but for samsung right now i think the s10 you actually can unlock it put like putting your finger where, where uh, in whatever spot on the on the phone so that's that's kind of that's kind of stimulus right the idea of unlocking your phone using your fingerprint the idea is still there but it's kind of like really modified modified right and changed a lot of it i hope that makes sense Okay, so next question we have, can you explain, oh, let me start, okay. So can you explain interregional and intra-regional migration, re migration more and then examples? So intra means within, okay? That pre prefix, like just know the, the difference between the prefixes to be able to understand the vocabulary word. So intra means within. So intra-regional migration is a migration from a region to region within the same country, with the same political borders, right? The same political borders. While inter-regional is the opposite, right? So migration out migration from a country to another country. So intra-regional migration, for example, if I'm living in California and I go to study maybe in New York, right? I go to study in New York. That would be an example of interregional migration. Or I got a work wherever very work, very good work opportunity in your in New York. I would travel I would just take my stuff and go there. So that's that's inter intra regional because we are within the same country, the US. But uh, for in I said intra, right? I said interregional. Yeah, interregional. But interregional would be like traveling from from two countries, like two different countries. So I would say, like, it's kind of like when you're explaining this stuff, it's good to like like throw in there other other vocab vocabulary words. So I would say, like, for me, if I don't know, like, that just came up to my to my head. I would talk about refugees, right? Refugees in the Middle East right now. Maybe because I'm the I'm from there, so it's kind of like just comes up to my I don't know, but okay. So um, I would say talk about like political ref refugees and just like refugees because of like war in Syria that they they would be considered uh, interregion they they would be like the migration they would be doing to leave the country that would be interregional right. A lot of them go to Turkey, Turkey and the surrounding um, borders, country borders like Iraq and what is it jordan okay no lebanon sorry lebanon yeah okay so they would move from syria and then relocate somewhere else in another country so i think that's good explanation so i hope that makes sense
explain maladaption. Where is it? Where is the question? Oh, okay. So it appears based on votes. Okay, okay. So we'll we'll. Oh, we got a lot of questions to answer. Okay. Okay, can you also talk about the challenges of sovereignty? Okay, I can talk. The thing is that I don't have a guide in front of me right now, so I'm just like trying to remember what stuff we're, we're like covered in the unit, but let me see. So we might be able to cover the political unit after if we have enough time, hopefully. So I would, I would, I would, where is, where are the questions? Okay. So I would, I would, I would just touch on that a little bit. So challenges of sovereignty. So I think the thing that always comes to my mind are like ethnic minorities, ethnic minorities that are very nationalistic and that kind of are like very ethnically, culturally different from the rest of the rest of the people living in a country. So an example of that would be Spain, right? The cat in Catalonia, we have the people there. See, like, um, the, it's the northern part of Italy, uh, Italy, the northern part of Spain, and it's kind of, like, geographically also disconnected. So you can say also, like, the geography, the geography of a, uh, the shape, we were talking about shapes of states, right, last week, I believe I was, I was doing that last week. So the geography of a place too plays an important role like role in sovereignty, but talking more specifically, ethnic minorities and the desire for them to uh, be thing, to, to govern themselves and to create their own, their own sovereign state, that would be challenged to sovereignty. And Yugoslavia is like a great example of that, right? We have so many ethnic minorities in there. And then when the, during the, the Bal balkanization they kind of all like separate cut like they're like they cut the country into pieces and then based on based on ethnic uh, similarities or i mean differences sorry okay can you talk about the law of the sea can you talk about the law of the sea so law of the sea so this is basically like the international law that most countries are supposed, okay, but I don't have the thing in front of me. I can't really, I don't remember the different, okay, let me bring it up. Let me bring it up and try to bring it up. So let me bring up the different phases because I don't remember the different phases. Sorry guys. Okay. Okay, so I would. Oh, God, I'm really sorry, guys. Oh, actually, I forgot something very important. Ha can you, you guys can see my editing here, right? Okay, you guys can see my editing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, so I don't know if you guys know, if you guys have watched the, um, the videos from the college board talking about the test. They're so important, guys. So if you guys have not watched them, please do. Please do. And we can watch them together right now too, if you guys have not. So, wait, okay. So let's talk about the law of the sea. Okay, so they're basically like four phases, four different territorial territories 
extending from the coast of a of of a country's of a country's extending from the coast of of a, of a country's border. So the first phase, the first like section is like, well, the first section is like internal waters. The waters are very close to the baseline of the foreign country, so those don't really count. But we have the territorial waters that are the closest closest um, to the territory and those would be basically the country has complete control over the, two, the first 12 miles except well the first 12 miles and then uh, the second 12 miles are called con uh, contagious zones and those are contagious right so we're talking about like things that might contaminate the land and might eventually affect right affect the country and the water of the country right so that would be though in that region countries foreign sovereign countries are able to impose laws that like kind of talk about regulating pollution taxation and immigration right who can enter our country how can they enter our country immigration would be i think turkey right turkey like again going back to like syrian refugees in turkey there are a lot of uh, syrian refugees that migrate illegally migrate illegally because of the whole thing right political stuff going on in syria but migrating uh, migrating illegally to turkey and i think a lot of them the land is Cy cyprus where the island where turkey has uh, control of the northern part of it so i think that would be a great example to take its own because it kind of uh, prevent like the turkish uh, turkish uh, soldiers are like military is kind of like preventing them from coming in because there's so many and like very hard to support that many immigrants and then the the one we always talk about and the one the phase that has a very like controversy and very like disputed kind of zone is the exclusive economic zone and because it deals with money right everything that deals with money everybody is vying for that right everybody's vying for power and for money so that's why <laughs> it's very there are a lot of like problems with that zone and that's where basically a country can actually access the resources within that ocean, that part, that sea area. And then we have the international waters where basically nobody has any control because it's just international. Nobody really has control. Wait, wait. The Peka Ashaku. Mother after Hasta. Mother after Hasta. Rohasta مقدار مقدار افتح الساعة فتح انا هاي مقدار افتح الساعة مقدار اوكي اوكي روح اوكي so international sorry for that for well, international water nobody has any control and then if, uh, the south china sea is an example of the uh, the dispute right the dispute in the exclusive economic zone there are like five countries that are actually like fighting over that that land because it's so rich in resources right and china's kind of like dominating the challenge they're like china taiwan philippines what else vietnam they're all kind of internationally are fighting for the to uh to control that land because whoever controls controls or oh, actually there are uh i think they call it party i parts party islands there are some there are very tiny islands in there so everybody's kind of wants to control these islands because whoever controls these islands can actually access the resources in that land right so i hope that makes sense that was a long explanation okay so we'll go back to our questions okay so okay Ooh, what happened Okay, we'll just leave it like that then. Is there a way to minimize this, but like not like make it completely big? Okay, yeah, okay, that makes sense. I'm so bad at tech, okay. So we're done with the law of the sea. Okay, Esker, we gotta look it up, cause like,
Okay, I'm very sorry, guys. I'm just trying to look like show up the curves because I think it's it will be easier to understand. I'm very sorry. <laughs> okay. I can't find a good diff Okay, this is a good ex Okay, I think this is a good one. Okay, okay. Let me see if I can get this on the... Okay. Right here. Okay, okay. Just a second, guys. Sorry. Anna. Sorry for that, guys. I had to get something. Okay. Okay, so did we get it? Did we get the escrow on? Let's see. Oh, it's blurry. What is this? Okay, we just I'll talk about it from the other. We don't need to. Okay, okay. So we're talking about diffusion and the S curve. Okay, so diffusion is just basically right. It's the spread of an idea or of people or of something, a phenomena, from one place to another, right? And then the S curve. So the X curve basically shows like a growth of it shows the growth of one variable over time, right? So let me see if I can. Internet here is very heavy because so many people are at home and everybody's using the Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I'm not okay. We're not gonna. I'm not gonna get you that thing because I can't find a good model. Everything is blurry or either not showing enough. I don't think it's a good idea to look up stuff right now. <laughs> okay, we'll move on and then we'll can we can we can cover that actually in the diffusion if we have enough time. Going back to the going back to the. Uh, population and population diffusion chapter. Okay, for our question, the first question, right? The whole agricultural stuff. Um, we have to cover the. We have to go back to the unit. So we'll we'll cover agriculture briefly. I hope I hope hope very briefly before we before we like finish with this. So uh. Second question, explain maladaption. Maladaption is basically the, let me see, it's basically the failure to adapt to changes in the environment. Yeah, so it's basically if, uh, when somebody migrates from a place to another place, there might be a lot of like external right changes especially in the environment. So being able, like uh, from, you can just like, like guess the meaning from the root of the word, smala means bad, and then ad adaption means adopting, right? So it's bad, it's being, it's ha like being, yeah, so it's basically, a failure to adapt to changes in the environment. And this can be due to migration. Oh, okay. We have a lot of model questions. And honestly, that was sick long to explain. So what what I would what I would say is that we next next Tuesday, yes, I would be host I would be hosting a whole stream about just the models and AP Hug. So I would highly encourage you guys to tune in in that stream next Tuesday, right, at 7 p.m. So please tune in into that stream to talk about the models because the models are very long. And if we're going to explain it, we're not going to have enough time to do other stuff that we're prepared for. So I hope that's okay, okay with you guys. Okay. Next question we have uh, explain the concept of irredentism. So, this is, those are a lot of vocab vocabulary words. So, that's good that you guys are actually doing that. So, it's basically the desire for a country to restore a piece of land that it in the past years it had like it had and now it no longer has control over so i would say an example of that would be if does that make sense right so the desire for a sovereign country to regain a piece of land that it previously owned in the past so kashmir in india is a good example of that kashmir belongs it used to belong to India, right? Under the, under the, does Mexico really want California back? Like, it's basically, no, I don't, I don't think that's a good example because Mexico does not really want California back. Like, no, no, I want to say that's a good example. But 
like it's actually like it's a creating a conflict. It's like it's creating a conflict and tension between these nations. That's like how intense it is. So Kashmir is a great example of that. Kashmir is uh, located in the north east of in use like India, right? But I think it's part of a uh, Bangladesh, right? No, no, no. What do we have? What is it? It's part of what is it right now? Part of Kashmir, Kashmir, Kashmir. Let me look it up. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, so it's part of Pakistan. Okay, 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 that was right. I was right then. Okay, so yeah, it's part of Pakistan right now. So and there's a lot of tension between these two two nations about because of that chunk of land. There's so many questions. Okay. Can law of the sea cause nationalism? Mm -hmm. I would say, I mean, potentially, but I would like for currently right now, the law of the sea is more so much political. Like it's not, I would say, well, potentially yes, but I won't write that <laughs> on LFRQ. Like because if you think of it, there are a lot of countries that depend heavily on fishing on fishing and the resources that are provided. So like the Philippines, especially the Philippines. So if they're kind of like if they're if that like opportunity is taken away from them, they're basically gonna be very mad, right? And that can cause nationalism, a lot of tensions. But nationalism is more like it's more of like oh like my my nationality is like super like like hmm it's it can but i won't write that like it can it can in the situation looking at the situation but in current day are are the law of the sea dispute like southern asia it's very political like it goes these disputes go into the U united nations and the, even the the us is involved in it maybe the us does not have any claim right it doesn't have any claim into that region but us is superpower right so it kind of controls a lot of the political affairs going on in the world hope that makes sense Okay, the baby bus. What's about the what's about the baby bus? Okay, so just like a very brief, very sh fast explanation. The baby bus is um the like kind of like the decrease, the instant decrease of the of birth rate, and If it's instant, right, it can be caused by a lot of fact, a lot of factors, a lot of like uh, medical factors, right? If I don't know, but if a population is not very well, if it, like it's for instance malnutrition, right? Women are not very healthy, so that can lead to baby bust. Or many developed countries kind of like just with the with the introduction uh, with the use of contraceptions. We see like, but it's not a, it's not a, it's not instant, right? It's kind of gradual and it's kind of developing with the country. So I won't say that's a good example, but I would say, yeah, I hope that makes sense. Uh, let's see, is the news really important for the FRQs? If so, how do we study that? What do you mean for the FRQs? Like. Like the stuff we're doing today, or generally, like the AP hug, like the stuff on my AP. I'm not sure. Just nasty, say that again, or type it, type it.
on AP exam. That's basically what. Wait, wait, wait. Sorry. Let's see. Oh, okay, okay. So like the news from the college. Oh, actually, you reminded me. Yes. Do you guys wanna? Do you guys wanna um, uh, kind of talk about the test or something like that? Because the college board. Let me let me share my screen. Because the college board. The college board posted two two videos yesterday on their website, on their YouTube website, talking about all of information and how to prepare for the test date. So I don't know if you guys want to watch it. We can maybe we can watch it next week because we're kind of short on time, right? And we're doing a lot. We have a lot to review. So we can do that next week if you guys don't know. I don't know. What what do you guys want? Tell me. Tell me the in the in the Tell me in the chat. What do you guys want? You want to watch it right now or we can do it next week since we're getting closer to the test? Oh, great, let's review. Yeah, it's, it's a review session. That makes sense. But it's very important. We ha we kind of have to, like, all the teachers are actually enforcing, like, people, like, their students actually, like, go and like watch the videos because like it's very important like it's important for the test can you talk about um uh, agri businesses and the supply and supply and commodity chains so um agri businesses are basically i would say the what is it called what is the word called The using of agriculture to, what is the word called? I forgot the word. Okay, commercializing, yeah, commercializing. So very sorry. Using of agriculture to com commercialize, right? To commercialize the production of stuff, right? And that kind of happened because and this is due to like basically we're, we're planting stuff to sell them not to use them right for not for yeah not to use them and this is possible because of you know the advances in chemistry using the fertilizer advances in in machinery right you like you really need to, like less manual work so that will increase production and that will make it possible for businesses to actually sell the stuff that they're making and then the supply and commodity chain is um is basically like this like the the steps by which a com like a something is a product is like being manufactured and made right and then sold so for example like let's say like like uh, the brand right h&m right it's a u.s brand right but a lot of their manufacturing is in china most famous brands right all of their manufacturing is in china and india like very like out like uh, uh, countries that really have very low like because because it requires so much less money right for labor wages right in those countries so they're kind of like getting the yarn right weaving it right making the making the different parts of a shirt right and then putting that all together all these different steps occur in different facilities or different countries i would say depending on their exp experience right like how good they are and obviously money wages that's what matter that's what matter right money how much profit they're making okay for the four desert we're not gonna do that because it's not it's not gonna be covered on the test so we move on because we have so many questions and we're literally 44 minutes and that's so oh i'm very sorry guys <laughs> we spent the whole time doing q a okay it's a q a though that makes sense tell me what you guys want to do after finishing this video link to the oh video link to the to the uh, ap stuff right okay yeah yeah that's very important we will do that we'll do that right now i'll do that right now so let me copy and paste this 
okay. There are two videos, one is four minutes and the other is two minutes. Let me get see. Okay, here. I hope you guys can access that. If not, I think I copied one of them wrong. There's a space between the C and the T. Try to erase that when you're, when you're, let me, just try it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, if it doesn't use the same, uh, like, channel, the advanced placement channel, to go back to the other chat, to the other video. Okay. How will this year different and another time to complete it? Will it be more based on graphs? How will the FRQ this year be different from other than the time to complete it? Will it be more based on graphs? I won't say it would be more based on graphs because in the like in the description they talk about there will be one stimulus, but I won't say it's more based on graphs. I think I I'm giving an assumption one will give you a stimulus, the other will not give you a stimulus. I would say that the shorter one will give you a stimulus because it's gonna be gonna be easier, right? It's gonna be well explaining a stimulus might be well it varies, it varies because it varies on how long the the question is and how many parts they are. So I won't say it's based it's based on uh, more on based on graphs, but the link doesn't work. Okay. Here, let me just copy it from here. Oops. Oops, again. Sorry. Okay, I'm so scared. I don't want to close the tab. There's so many tabs open. Okay, here, this is the second link, the first link. Again, the good one, like the one that's actually working. Okay. So the only difference is the how long you're gonna take, right? And the time to upload it. So please watch the videos to be able to know, like be familiar with the with the format, right? And how you're gonna be able to submit your test. So watch the videos for sure. Okay, last question. Can you explain how lack of development can lead to failed state? Lack of development lead to failed state. Let me see. I always have to come up with examples, right? To explain the stuff I'm coming up with. So let me see, Somalia. Somalia is a great example of that. Somalia is so rich in resources, but yet it is such a failed state. Like, honestly, it's, it's very undeveloped, right? There are no resources, right? People are kind of very suffering, very suffering, right? And this is like, even though the country is so rich, but because of the corruption in the country, it's very like lacking development and this lack like because it's so much undeveloped right there's no really any resources for the people right and kind of like they're like these um like people that are coming into power but they're basically just like kind of like terrorists that are basically getting control of the land there and the the Somal uh Somal the triangle created by somalia and um and Asia, that triangle of land, they basically are like, basically that line is very dangerous because they, these like kind of uh, pirates, they act like pirates, I would say. So they control that coast and whoever actually access that part kind of gets like robbed, their ships get stolen. So that's a result of, that's a very failed state, right? Because the country is so lacking, right? It's there, There's no control, like, there are no resources, right? Even when people get sick, you can't really get go to a doctor. And even if they can, they might have to travel for so long. Even the access for water, right? You see a lot of, like, advertisements or, like, uh, fundraising. For fundraising for Af uh, Af uh, people living in Africa that are suffering. Lack of development, right? People are like can't even access water they don't have access to clean water they have to travel for miles to access just water it's something that's so simple and so needed so that's that we answered 17 questions that was so long okay okay we'll do one of our q 
Okay, okay, so I know many of you guys are gonna uh, be doing, uh, want to do aquaculture, and since we don't have enough time, what we will do is that we will cover, because I, I know I made I made sure I had an ag agriculture, um, agriculture thing, agriculture FRQ. So we'll do the agriculture FRQ, and then we can do the other ones if we have enough time. If that is that cool with you guys, to just review a little bit about agriculture? Is that cool? Good? No? Yes? Yes? No? Okay, so we'll do agriculture. Let's see where is the agriculture one. I had it. Oh, and it's with the stimulus too, so that's good. Okay, so it's this one. Okay, so don't like write paragraphs, but let me make this bigger so you don't see my face anymore. Okay. Oh, I'm very sorry. You can you, are you guys you guys are not able to see the whole thing, right? Are you? Tell me if you're able to see the whole slide, the all the questions. No. Okay, now you can. Okay. Okay, so we have a stimulus here, right? We have kind of like marked a couple of marked question marked um marked answers okay so Agriculture systems, such as the production of coffee, so we're talking about coffee, are part of global networks. So before starting, right, we're talking about coffee and we have these selected countries. Right? What do we know about these countries and what kind of agriculture, right? Agricultural stuff they're producing. Describe a common characteristic shared by coffee producing countries down, shown on the map. So write something really fast, right? Really fast in the, in the chat to talk, to address that question. Describe a common characteristic shared by coffee producing countries shown on the map. So something they have in common, right? We're talking about agriculture, agriculture, right? And look at the country, how developing or undeveloping they are, right? Right. And what do we know about coffee, right? What do we know about production of coffee, right? Like if we're Africa, for example, what do we know? How is it produced, right? Do we have machinery? Do we not have machinery? There is very, like the question is very generic, right? Just telling, choose one of these countries and talk about it. How is coffee kind of being produced there? Oh, no, 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 never mind. I read it wrong. Common characteristic shared by coffee producing countries. Common. So they all have, these characteristics are going to be kind of shared because they're producing coffee. Okay, so we have some questions, uh, some answers, sorry. Okay, so, okay, so they're located, right? You're talking about the location, right? The environment, right? The located, um, they're located very close to the equator, right? Because, because coffee requires, the production of coffee requires that kind of environment. So that's a very good one, a very like easy one to, get right because it makes sense if you look at the graph they're basically all around the equator physiological density is high right Physiolo what, what was physio physio uh, physiological density again guys what is physiological density that's a good that, that's a very good term 
the very good thing to bring up. What's physiological density, guys? The density of the amount of people per unit of agricultural land. Yeah, for arable land. That's correct. Okay, so let's move on to the, the next question. Explain two impacts of coffee farming on producing countries. So the impact of producing coffee on countries, right? What is it gonna cause? What kind of factors and changes it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna cause within a country? Okay, so think of the environment, right, as a factor, right, that can be affected, eco economy, right, the um, jobs, right, so we're producing, we're producing, we're heavily dependent on producing coffee, so more jobs are going to be available, right, let's see one of the questions, not that sustainable, yes, that's good, so what does that mean, what kind of changes are going to happen if it's not that sustainable, right, producing coffee is not su that sustainable, well, what, what kind of effect is going to happen? it's going to have on the environment right so that's a those are very good answers you guys are, are putting in there yeah it's harmful yeah producing coffee is harmful so it's gonna affect the environment it's gonna affect the environment the, those questions are actually the, those are pretty good pretty good okay i don't know if i explain one way increased coffee consumption outside of coffee growing areas affect its production so if we increase let's say in the u.s right i think we consume a lot of coffee right a lot of starbucks right we have a lot of starbucks in here so if we increase the production the consumption of that what is that gonna put what kind of stress is that i'm kind of giving an answer <laughs> what kind of changes that's gonna happen in those countries or those uh workers that are farmers that are producing that what kind of change is that gonna happen have on these on these farmers or not these farmers not not specifically farmers but like the just the production in coffee it does not have to be specific like yes farmers can be affected obviously but we can go outside of carrying capacity agriculture farm hmm like it's just you're like you're like saying that um so you're basically saying that like the hmm like the country is not like the land is not able or it's like no longer fertile so it can't really produce that because there's so much sources but i mean that can be a factor, yes. I would say that's that's a valid question. But with the technologies we have, like a lot of these farmers actually use fertilizers. Well, depending on if it's developed or not. Like I would say in Brazil and South America and Central America, yes. But in Africa, maybe not, maybe because they don't have the access, the right resources. So I would say yes, that that, that can be a valid answer. Yeah, I would. I was looking for that. Yeah, more demand on pre, uh, more demand on on workers, and especially if like in Africa where they're lacking resources. So the only way to speed up that production is to actually work harder because they don't have like there's no technological thing or machine or a uh, fertilizer that will increase that production of the coffee or the product whatever they're producing. So yes, I would say that. <laughs> Okay, so next question, explain one change. 
Uh oh, the thing is covered. Okay, explain one change in the. Let me read it from the outside. Okay. So, okay. So, explain one change in the urban landscape in 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 the developed world. So, developed world, associated with the coffee consumption. Guys, make sure to read the question very good. So, like these, like. Are you asking for cues like these keywords developed countries right developed countries that's a keyword right they basically want to talk about specific things and make sure to like if you're like if that helps you right don't do it if it doesn't help you but if it helps you like to mark down the key, key, key vocabulary word or to like yeah to mark down the key vocabulary word and to actually to actually answer the question yeah telling you to explain so you, you're answering the question, how is it? What are these some kind of changes associated with coffee consumption? And how are they changes? Why are they changes? Why is that important? How is that gonna affect? Like explaining is kind of more than just identifying, right? Okay, so what are some changes that can happen in the developed countries, like in the US, the Europe, East, uh, Western Europe, Eastern Western Europe, I would say, yeah. Or more Western Europe, it's, it's more different. Okay, so what are some changes that can happen in developed countries that will affect coffee consumption? What kind of companies that are created, hint, that consume a lot of coffee? Another hint. Since there is a lot of demand for coffee, the developed the world, there will be an increase in coffee shops. Increase coffee shops. That's a great one. That's like a plus two, plus one, whatever the 20 points that question is. That's that's very good one. Yeah. Many businesses would be created like Starbucks. Great. Ella, more of a demand for coffee in the urban landscape and increasing prevalency of places to buy coffee to supply needs of the population. This is why you migrate to Starbucks very frequently. Yes, those are great questions. Great answers, guys. Good job. You guys are doing pretty good. Those are, you actually are, is, is answering the question and very, 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 very good. So we also, we, we're talking coffee shops, right? We can also see more specialized coffee shops. Coffee shops that yeah, more specialized coffee shops. Like where they would have like Starbucks, right? Starbucks, we have like study, like a place to study, right? There is free Wi-Fi. So that would be kind of more specialized coffee shops. Like it's not where you just like, like 7-Eleven where you just go and buy, sh buy, buy, buy coffee whenever you want it. But it's kind of like focus on coffee, but you have other kind of uh what is it called like services provided with that to kind of like in, uh, uh, attract more customers so yeah we're kind of done with this session okay so we have one question one question i think it's up one one talking about frq okay so how long should an frq be my typed FRQ is only half page long, but when I handwrite it, it is one and a half page long. Honestly, there is no limit of how long it is, but I would say you have to like, I would say that your FRQ should not be too long because you need to have enough time to answer all the questions and make, make sure like you have like, especially for the first one. Sorry guys. Especially for the first FRQ, it's multiple like sections. So make sure you have enough time and to time yourself right, right? Don't write stuff that are not important. Just answer the question and give an example or two and that's it. Like it doesn't have to be that long. And I would say make sure to know how you're gonna submit the test. That's why I watch the videos I said. Watch the videos I said. Now right now, after we're done. After we're done, watch the videos. <laughs> because you can type it or you can handwrite it. So whatever is whatever like if you're a good typer you will make your and a fast typer you can type it if you're not then i would say handwrite it 
just depending on what what you like so yes we are done with today with today with <laughs> with this q a i hope it was helpful for everybody this was my first actually this was my first um my first those are the answers for this stuff we didn't we didn't have time to go over them which is okay uh my th this is my first study guide which is really fun i really like there's a lot of participation and there's a lot of people that actually showed up okay so we are done but don't forget don't forget to follow think fiveable or fiveable at twitter instagram youtube facebook and tiktok we have facebook and tiktok very recently very very recently so yeah and then again, I keep showing that, but if you are taking any other AP classes, don't forget to tune in into these days, to these sessions. If you're interested in the subjects or you wanna do better on the test. So yeah, that's it. I hope everybody has an amazing day. Stay safe, stay healthy, sleep well, go outside, get some vitamin D in, and don't forget, study. <laughs> Thank you for showing up today, guys. Bye.